said when I planned this shoot, we were going to start with makeup and so on about 10 o'clock, and I'd be very happy if we got any shots done before 12. We're going to take some shots before 12. To be honest, we're probably going to delete them all. What I want to do is get the models used to being in the water, used to swimming around with their eyes open. Once that's good, once I'm confident the camera is working properly and we're getting focus every time, I'm picking the shots I want, we're getting the lighting how we want it. Then we've got some clothes on to put on just to get used to the way the fabric again works in the water, how they need to move to get the fabric to flow. Once we've done all that, we'll get the wedding dresses on. That's going to be at least 12 o'clock, maybe closer to 1. But by that time, they'll be very confident in the water. They'll be knowing what they're doing. We know we're getting great shots. And the limited number of shoots we're going to get before we have to take the dresses out of the water is going to give us the best results. Shooting with my favourite Nikon D3. Uh, most of the other videos you've seen me do are Hasselblad photography. Uh, today, the Hasselblad is going nowhere near the water. We can't get a housing for it for a, a reasonable cost of money and there is no way we're bringing it in a pool. So I'm on the Nikon D3, which is an excellent camera, very, very fast autofocus, and the lens on it, my favorite lens, 2470, won't go in the housing, and to be honest, zooms really don't work that well underwater. I'm on a 24 mil prime, which means I'll be getting very, very close, full length body shots. I'll be shooting from about three feet away at the most. A lovely sharp lens, very small, very light, and pretty fast. As with most things in underwater, um, anything, particularly underwater photography, there's a number of companies very, very happy to take your money. Um, I looked around and there are some really great lights, un underwater flashlights you can buy for about 400 pounds each. Um, that's way over budget, so um, I went down the pound shop. This is a uh, Nikon SB800. Um, it's in a box that um, should hold cereal, juice, something like that. Um, which they guarantee is 100% waterproof. So if this all goes wrong, I get my pound back. In the box, uh, I just put a little bit of gravel to weight it down. Uh, one of those really absorbent cloths in case any water does get in there. Uh, then we have an SB800, which is set in full manual SU4 mode. So as soon as it sees a flash of light, it's gonna go off. Um, top sealed on, we put as much gaffer tape as we could. Oh, there's also a plastic bag around the um, flash gun, though to be honest, if the water gets that far, we're probably in trouble. We have um, Jane Fonda workout weight, a bit of string, um, just drop it in the water. Okay, ordinarily with Studio Flash, I would always use radio triggers, they're much more reliable. Um, unfortunately, underwater, radio triggers just don't work at all. So, all the way over here, we have a huge Studio flashlight giving out immense amounts of power, and I've taken a sink lead, Fastened on an optical slave cell and put it underwater. Theoretically, it's waterproofed. That means it's in a plastic bag with some gaffer tape on top. There's also a couple of weights holding it down. So the theory is that I'm in the water, the flash on the camera goes off, it will trigger the studio strobe and also the waterproof SP800 we've got. Three very important things to think about with safety today. Um, obviously we want to end the day with everybody happy, nothing going wrong. So in increasing order of importance, your camera. There is a remarkably small amount of water you can get on a camera before it stops working. Even worse, if the housing leaks and the water's trapped in there, even a splash that you shrug off in rain will be a problem. So firstly, you want to keep your camera dry, you want to make sure that you get it right. Do not come and blame me if you buy a housing on eBay and it leaks, because they often do. Um, also the flash guns, we have um, tested the stuff. It should work. Um, if it doesn't, the, the flash guns will be destroyed. It really takes very little water before they'll go. Secondly, and a lot more importantly, we're underwater. 
um, eats fun messing around in pools, everybody knows what they're doing. We got a couple of first aid trained people here. I'm a qualified diver, we've got lots of people around. There are about 10 people on this shoot. There will never be more than three in the water at once. So we've got seven pairs of eyes on the water. Just in case somebody gets tired, overextends himself, gets their legs trapped in a wedding dress and can't get out of the water, we've got people on hand to solve that. Very, very important. And lastly, possibly the one you don't, don't think of, but is probably the most important, is we're using high voltage mains capacitor driven flash packs here. I'm not entirely sure of the, the physics, but we reckon if you drop one of these in the pool, everybody in the pool is probably dead which is why there is somebody standing next to it at all times. We've got, I think in total, over 20 kilos of weight on the dry side, just holding it back. But we're really not gonna have any accidents with that. Six o'clock, we've been shooting for about seven hours now and everybody is exhausted. Our models have been in the water a long time. I've been in the water for hours and hours and just staying underwater that time has, has worn me out. Picture's looking great on the back of the camera. I set out this morning with the goal that we would get some pictures and to be honest, the models have, uh, have performed beyond my wildest dreams. We've had a couple of issues with, with kit, got over them, really, really excited to go home, have a look at these on the big screen, see just what we got.